Hey everyone, this is Kibastic and today I have prepared another challenge for myself. I'm going to deal with this incredible lock puzzle. I 3D printed it and it looks just amazing. I love such beautiful puzzles, but when I first saw it on the internet, I thought, I wonder, is it an easy puzzle or a difficult one? Now you will see me trying to solve this puzzle and revealing its secret. But first you need to stretch your brain, so here's a riddle. The criminal has been sentenced to death, and he has the right to say his final words. If what he says is true, he will be drowned, and if he lies, he will be hanged. The question, what do the criminal have to say to avoid punishment? Write the answers in the comments, and we will begin to solve the puzzle. And the essence of it is not so obvious. Here you need not only to open the lock, but also to close it. Now you will see everything. Here we go. I will solve this puzzle together with my lucky charm, Jared. You haven't seen him for a while, you can say hi to him in the comments. Jared returns in my videos and he will be my mascot and will help me, support me morally while I'm solving puzzles. Let's get started. By the way, I really love what these colors look like. Yellow and red go great together. And now we need to figure out how to close this lock. We need to put all the yellow parts inside the red so that the lock closes. This part of the lock here should be completely locked and fixed by the other parts of the puzzle. I will use a timer to check how much time it will take me to deal with this puzzle. Jared will keep track of the time. You can write in the comments your guesses and we are going to start. So, let's start with the big central detail. We need to understand how this detail can be placed here. It has uh, two hypothetical positions. It uh, could be uh, placed from one side and from the other if uh, we turn it over. This square here prevents us uh, from inserting our data like that. We need to move it, then immerse it in, and then bring it back. I mean, it kind of zips up. By the way, the lock is also able to work this way. And I think it really complicates our puzzle. It becomes more difficult to move this detail. Let's try to find out what else can we fit in these holes. It uh, kind of fits and they have uh, equal areas if you look from the side. So and this hole that's formed here uh, fits uh, both one piece and the other. But uh, they have to be intertwined somehow. Now I'm going to remove the main one and see how uh, they might be intertwined. I think there is uh, only one option. They can be intertwined uh, like this. So they occupy the entire area and uh, it's uh, the only right option. But we can turn the parts upside down, change uh, the front uh, with the back and uh, swap them. One detail can be higher and the other one below. But at first we are going to put the one at the top in. Uh, because we won't be able to insert uh, the top part because of the blocking element. Now is the time when my puzzle solving experience would be useful and Jared tells me that first I have to try to assemble this figure outside the lock's enclosure. I'll assemble it separately out of the yellow parts. That's it, the front and the back and this thing has to be inside. And in order for it to fit inside, uh, I have to completely clear this passage, so it's not going to fit this way, because uh, we need space uh, for this uh, long part. It's not going to be in this position. What other options could there be? Uh, the option might be the following. Turn this one over like this. Could it be like this? It could. We can swap them. This here and this down. There are quite a lot of positions, by the way. Now we just have to figure out how to place it all together. This is exactly how we block the lock and it won't open. Maybe somehow like this. So how can we put them here? This one 
here and this one here. There is a place for parts and we need to put them in somehow. Ah, I was thinking that... Uh, look, there's a corner right here, a corner that sticks out and uh, we can't insert it. But I thought uh, if we move one detail, we'll have a space here. But it turns out uh, when we move the yellow one, it blocks the lumen and we can't put anything in there at all. Yes, the puzzle is not that easy. It seems to me that if the task was uh, to open the lock, just to open it, it would be much easier. But we need to think a lot to open it. Hmm. I found another position of detail. I like this. And this is the only possible location for this detail where we can do this kind of thing, this kind of movement. And uh, we can do it uh, both ways, but uh, the logical thing is to do it uh, this way. Well, basically I need to do it uh, this way. Do I get it right? Hmm. I put this one down, this one up, what's next, this one right, no, well, it has to move, doesn't want to. It's very similar to the Excalibur puzzle, but there were many more of these details and the interaction between them was very complex. And here, as you can see, there are only three details, but it's hard for me to do anything about them. Let's try another one, here, here, this way, it's so much easier. Oh, and it lifts perfectly as you can see. Damn, why is it so complicated? It looks so simple, but it's almost impossible to solve. So that's what we have done. And it freely moves back and forth. And uh, we have a little bit space uh, for movement uh, of that detail. Oh, maybe we had to start like this. I like it. This lock was designed uh, to be impossible to open. But it cannot be closed, so it uh, won't be very popular if uh, used in real life. Whoa, whoa, it fits perfectly. Hmm, and what's next? Hmm, that's some problem. This key can move diagonally. Hmm, maybe we can use it somehow. So we have more room to move. We can get it down one line lower than uh, if we did it uh, in this position. In this position we can get it down one notch below. Ah, this little red detail impedes my movements. You know, Jared, this puzzle wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. It seems to me quite complicated, but I hope we can handle it. By the way guys, in one of the following videos I'm going to make a Sudoku cube out of a regular 3x3 and then I'll try to solve it. It's gonna be a nice challenge, so subscribe and hit the bell not to miss out. Ok, I'm 100% sure that this piece with uh, this thing on it will be at the bottom. Because uh, there's no way we can get the key through it. That means it's down there and it placed exactly like this towards the main detail. So this one's either going to be like this or it's going to be like this. It's going to have two positions. I'm glad we've come at least to this. That's it. Folks, uh, subscribe to my friend's channel about customization, it's worth it. <laughs> ha! I found this position! Just look how simple it turned out. Literally 5 moves. Now we have the only option and it's here. We put it down, we move all the pieces together, we shift them back and uh, fix them. The puzzle was solved in 19 minutes uh, 36 seconds, but now we have to open it. By the way, now it looks more holistic and even 
more promising because it has a backlit on the top. Just imagine there's a lock like this on some door and you have to open it only with your brain. It's a little easier for me now because I know how to open it. So you can open it in a few minutes and if you train then you can do it in a few seconds. Something stuck here. Oh. Well. I've already forgotten how it happened. Like this. Well. <laughs> I can't. In fact, the lock is open, here, you see, but you have to get this deal out. So now, it wasn't so easy to do. That's it. Wow, I spent 21 minutes to completely solve this puzzle. And it took much longer to 3D print it, but it was worth it. The puzzle is bright, stunning, complicated in its own way, Jared agrees. If you liked this video, you will love other videos on my channel. There are a lot of them, so check out the videos that you see on your screen. See you soon, that was Cubastic, bye everyone and have a good time!